We're still here at Maker Faire 2022 in Rome, and this is Brillo, which is a bartending robot. I'm here with Alexandra from the project, who's going to explain a little bit more about where this robot came from and the ideas behind it. So, um, is this uh, is this something that is uh, kind of supposed to be a product, or is this more of a research idea for now? So this started as a research. Uh, so it comes from a project in conjunction between the University of Naples, Federico II, and uh, a company named uh, Totaro Automation. And uh, it's an Italian project. And the idea is to have uh, a robot, a service robot, that does not only produce, give a service, so producing, uh, serving drinks, uh, cocktail, or smoothie, but actually engaging people for a long-term uh, relationship with the customer and in order to have uh, not just a vending machine where you take the drink and after a while you get bored but you won't actually come back and uh, enjoy some conversation like we do with the human bartender so usually bartenders are like the human ones are a bit of the and and certified uh, uh, psychologists where we talk and we spend some time, we are happy if they remember the drinks that we order or even something about us. And the same concept we, we are adapting it to, to Brillo, uh, which uh, take uh, um, personalized the interaction and uh, recommend not only the drinks, uh, the type according the user uh, preferences, but also uh, the interaction style. So people, when they go in a bar, usually either are rushing through and just want something quickly, or they actually want to spend some time there. And uh, the robot takes uh, some information of a general um, culture, different topics like a culture, a sport or a politics from Twitter news, uh, either from actually uh, real news like for example ANSA which is an Italian uh, type of uh, information uh, or uh, a comic one like uh, some to so having some uh, funny news and uh, the, the robot asks uh, the the person is, that is interacting with this kind of information and then adapts uh, according to the answer. Uh, another uh, one of the sometimes you have seen here that people pass through and the robot does not start the conversation that's because he actually recognizes the clients, the customers, they arrive because um, when you go on a bar you have to pay of course for your drinks and uh, the robots recognize the face of the registered people that actually bought the drink uh, using the camera is a 360 degree camera and um, he recognizes the biometrical face uh, um, recognition of the of the people so sure and i mean one of the things i find so fascinating about it is that as well as it having a very industrial look with the arms obviously because they are uh, proper uh, industrial robots that are usually used in fabrication the face is so very expressive and is that, is that a projection is it projecting the image onto the back of the mask yeah the robot is composed actually by three different robots so there is uh, the central one which is a, a furat robotics uh, uh, head and the, the two kuka uh, arm so the head is meant to be more human like with um, has a projector underneath the mask that uh, can be changed uh, with different uh, expression and also different uh, feature. So it can be uh, of different genders, ages, or uh, ethnicity. So it can be a bit of a difference. And um, you also can change, of course, the, the voice. Yeah. And uh, we also developed uh, a different expression to actually match uh, the speech uh, uh, recognized by the user, but also to what the robot uh, is, uh, is saying. Uh, at the same time, this is for mainly the interaction because uh, people usually are more comfortable with something, to talk with something that looks like them. So it's, uh, it's easier to talk with something that has a face, a mouth, uh, and eyes, is looking at you. Uh, but at the same time, so we need to prepare the drinks and handling bottles, uh, glasses, and that's it's uh, useful to have actually uh, arms like the Kuka one. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny you mention that as well because one of the defining factors of a good barman or a good barwoman is that they will hold a very good conversation with you while they're doing very complicated things with their hands. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Now this is a this is a really interesting project, and, a, and a, the personification of industrial robots and putting them into spaces that they're not you know, kind of usually found in is something that I found very very interesting indeed. But uh, yeah, I do wonder how long it's going to be until I can uh, actually get a, a drink from a from a bartending robot somewhere near me. <laughs> there, are se there are several aspects that should be considered. Yeah. Like for example, here we have a separation of it. Yeah. So because if we wanted to make sure people are actually safe yeah. while the robot is moving around, yeah. and uh, also there are other aspects where we are working on, for example, privacy. When we go to a, a human bartender, the, often uh, the, he says, okay, I'll bring you your usual one, your usual drink. Uh, but what if the robot actually say out loud, do you want uh, your mojito and it's uh, like 10 a.m.? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you might feel a bit uncomfortable if there are, you know, strangers behind you and you don't yeah. want them to uh, know this. No, absolutely, so, yeah. You have to program discretion into the exactly, robot bartender, yes. yeah. So, <laughs> at the moment, it's just a prototype because we are still working on this aspect. Uh, but after all, all these uh, different uh, shades are solved, I guess that uh, it will be just natural to actually have a final product. Absolutely, yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to explain Brillo to me. And uh, yeah, it's, it's what, a, what a wonderful device visually, but the fact that it has so much depth to it is really fascinating. And I know everyone out there is going to find that so too. So yeah, thank you very much for thank chatting to me so today. Much.